All right, welcome to Easter morning, everybody. He is risen. All right, that's like the second of 55 times you're probably going to say that today. So <laughs> that's a tradition you will find in some churches people say that. Um, so <clears throat> I want to talk about a few things kind of as a quick review of some of the key elements of the Easter story because it's so important to us, right? Okay, it's so important. So what I've got is I've got some of these eggs. And these are the eggs that uh, sometimes we would hide these, you know, things in these treats and candies and stuff, and maybe some of you use eggs like this, maybe you don't. We had these when I was young. Uh, but we're going to use these to remind us a little bit about uh, some elements of the Easter story. And so I'm just going to hand out uh, these kind of one at a time if you want to. Open it up and tell us what's in that. And these are going to remind us about certain things on the week of Easter, okay? Through, you know, starting last Sunday all the way through here to today. And, and some, if you don't know it, that's okay. Just tell it what it is, and we'll try to figure it out together. So anyone want to open this first one? Yeah? Okay, there you go. Have that. There you go. There you go. You want to open one? Okay. What's that? A palm leaf. Okay, right. That's from Palm Sunday. Okay, so that it was only a week ago when people, pilgrims, came into Jerusalem. They're waving the palm branches. Jesus is King of Israel, right? Okay. Um, that's true. Um, what about over here? Do you want to open one? Check that out. Okay. Open that out, Grayson. Okay. What's in that? What is it? Oh, okay, cool. A little piece of bread. Okay, that's interesting. So that's a bit of a trickier one, but does anyone know where that is from? Like, why would we talk about that this week? Yeah. Yeah, the Last Supper. That's right. And Jesus, before he died on the cross, he broke bread, right? And says, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. We've got those words right in the front of this communion table. And it's a reminder that he gave his life for us. And it wasn't a surprise. He knew it was going to happen, right? Okay. Now, let's see uh, what's next. Here's another one. Okay. Um, open that up. Be careful with that one. It's three nails. Three nails. Okay, right. Be careful. I need to be careful. So don't, you know, be careful with that. Um, three nails. So what, what's that about? What, in a sense, yeah. Nail Jesus to the cross. And we talked about that on Good Friday, right? He died in our place, right? The sin and brokenness, and we deserve it, but he died in our place, right, to give us peace with God and forgive us of sins. That's so, so important. Um, let's see, here's, here's another one. Okay, here's a piece of the story. Um, what do you think, Jack? Here, do you want to open that? You grab that. What's in that? Nothing. Nothing in that one. Oh, my goodness. Sorry to disappoint you. That's kind of tricky. <laughs> Nothing in that one, right? So why do, you, why do you think I have that one as empty? Hmm? Oh, I heard May say it. What? Who said it? The tomb, the empty tomb, right? And here's the thing, the empty tomb is empty, and that would have been very surprising to people, but because, you know, it's kind of like maybe a bit sad because it wasn't something in there. You open this one too, okay? You grab that one. Oh. Okay. 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 You take the empty one. Now, what's in that one? Cash. Oh, my goodness. Well, there's a happy face. It's like... <laughs> there you go. And so here, here's the thing. People would have been surprised, right? Now we tell the story so often we think, okay, we, we know, okay, the tomb is empty, yeah. But people would have been surprised and really, really excited about that, okay? Oh, thanks. Um, and we need to remember that this is surprising to people. Here's part of the reason why it is surprising. Now, I need someone to come up and help me hold a few signs. This is a non-talking part. Um, come forward. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come up to the front. All right, you stand here, okay? There you go. You hold these one at a time, okay? All right. Hold on. You, you go grab a seat, okay? Grab a seat. Okay. <clears throat> so here's the thing that's so amazing and such good news and so surprising about this, okay? So Jesus, the fact that he, hold them up high, the fact that he rose from the tomb means he was victorious. He defeated hate, okay? I'm going to move to the next one. He defeated sin, okay? We're going to say these together. He defeated despair. He defeated darkness. He defeated the devil. He defeated death itself. Now, that's amazing. Now, here's, here's another thing that's even more good news about why this is surprising. Keep holding these, okay? So, in faith, see, this is something that is not just good news for Jesus. It's good news for us as well. So, here's this little doll, okay? And so, we're going to pretend this is Jesus, okay? Now, 
As far as we know, he didn't have a red bonnet or nice, nice flowers, but we're, go with me on this one, okay? So this is, this is Jesus. So one of the things we say that in faith, we are in Jesus. We are in Christ, okay? Not physically, we're not inside his body, but like we are in him. We are in his goodness. We are in him, and the things that he does is a benefit to us, okay? So this is Jesus. This is you. This came out okay, and again, you don't have the red bonnet, you don't have the nice flowers, maybe, maybe later you will. Anyway, if we're in Christ, it's like, okay, we're inside of Christ, okay? So part of the reason that this is such good news is because it's not only because of what Jesus has done, it's what he has done for us if we are in him. So just as Jesus has done all these things, he has defeated hate, that means that we can and will defeat hate in our own lives, Okay? Just because Jesus has defeated sin, we can and will defeat sin in our own lives. Okay, what's next? Just because Jesus defeated despair, we can and will defeat despair in our own lives. Okay, you see how this is connected to us? Thank you. Now you're getting the hang of it. Jesus has defeated darkness, therefore we can and will defeat darkness. Next one. Jesus has defeated the devil, therefore we can and we will defeat the devil through God's power. Okay? Next one, finally. Jesus has defeated death, therefore we can and will defeat death. So what's good news for him is good news for us as well. So I just want you to remember that. This isn't just about what someone did a long time ago and what happened to Jesus, although that is the central part of it. There's also benefits for us too, okay? What happened to Jesus has benefits for us today. And that's part of the reason why we celebrate. All right. Thanks, Julia. Appreciate your help. Okay. Let's have a prayer together on this Easter Sunday. And uh, yes, Jack, you can keep the 20 bucks and you can talk to your mom about that. <laughs> and let's pray. Repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, Dear Heavenly Father we, thank you for your hope and power. we thank you for your hope and power. Keep Easter in our hearts. Keep Easter in our hearts. The, true of Easter, the true meaning of Easter. Your resurrection power. Your resurrection power. Which is not only something that happened. But which, happen but which continues to happen in your people today. In, your people today. in the powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right. Your